Hey everybody, I was doing some research for keyboards for my new desk setup, and my original thought was to get another ergonomic keyboard like I used to have at my old job. Um, but then I went down this YouTube rabbit hole of mechanical keyboard research, and I just found them really intriguing, and I decided I kind of wanted to give a mechanical keyboard a try. I picked up this keyboard from Keychron, it's the Keychron K4. Uh, it was the right size for me. They have many different sizes with these mechanical keyboards. You can get really tiny ones or full size. This is about a 98% keyboard. It's almost full size, but still nice and compact. Um, I love the design. It's got these sort of retro feels and the custom colors you can do with the keycaps. This is really cool. And they're pretty satisfying to use. I love that tactile feel and the nice satisfying sound you get. Maybe it's not the best choice for an office setting, but from working from home, it's just me. It's really satisfying. So anyway, I'm giving this a try for a while and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, they say it's good to switch up your keyboards every once in a while, just so you're not always get, you know, in the same positions. So I might still switch between one of these and an ergonomic keyboard. This keyboard, it's really substantial. I, I love its design. It has a really th thick aluminum casing though. Um, which can get a little bit tiring. That's one of the reviews. Everyone really likes them, but because they're so beefy, um, you sort of need a wrist rest to use with it. Keychron sells a wooden wrist rest. It looks pretty nice, but it's like $30. And I have a bunch of scrap wood lying around and some woodworking chops, so I figured, hey, I can make that for nothing. So I'm gonna give that a try. So I had a scrap piece of bamboo plywood, and I'm just keeping that off here in the peripheral just to sort of have an idea of what my desktop is, since my desktop is made out of bamboo plywood. So I can see the desktop and my keyboard, and I'm gonna bring some scrap pieces by just to see what I think matches best. I had a really nice piece of maple with some really nice grain. Uh, that's what I wanted to use, but it wasn't quite thick enough for the needs. You can see it's you don't get a lot of wrist support. I'm gonna model it after the wrist rest that Keychron has, and their dimensions was about three and a half inches thick. Um, so that seems probably like a good number, and I was kind of playing around, and this is just a little bit too narrow to rest your wrist on. So I had a few things. I had like a piece of mahogany, it's like a scrap piece of walnut, and I had some alder here. In the end, I think it's going to be the walnut that wins out. So I'm just going to pick a section out of this where I like the grain the most. And then we're going to cut this down to size. I'll just use that end piece there. Just line up one edge. Keyboard there. Just use a straight edge here to line up the other side and where I need to cut this. Okay. So I'll cut this down to length first, and then so I just have a smaller piece to run through the table saw to trim off the final thickness that we want. down the size. Alright, now we're going to cut down to the final size. Use this nice clean edge. Go to about 3.15 or just over three and an eighth. Okay. Got these little 
rubber adhesive pads that I'll use for the underside. And I'm just going to put those underneath right now, just so it'll be at its final height. I'm not using all these, but just to prop it up. Yeah, so that's how it'll rest. It's going to look pretty good, I think, huh? Now you get a nice wrist rest and a comfortable height with the keyboard. All right, so now first I'm going to round off these corners, sort of match the rounded edges of the keyboard case. And then I'm going to sand down at an angle this one side kind of like that, just to get a slight slope. You might have seen me use this before in sanding, but I use these sort of, you know, I uh, get them in Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever, they're like drawer liners. Um, but they just help in sanding to help your piece from sliding around. It's nice. All right, now we're just gonna decide which is the top. So this is our top side. So now I'm gonna take some really coarse sandpaper. I'll put this up against the edge. Uh, sand down this edge mostly to get a little bit of a slope. Oh, it feels nice. It's nice and smooth. So I did up to 220 grit with the Orbital Sander. That's the highest I have there. Now I'm just going to use some hand sanding to go even finer to get just even smoother. And yeah, we're going a little excessive with the sanding on this because your wrists are going to be on it constantly. So you want this to be nice and smooth. And then I think I'm going to finish this with shellac. And then after the final coats and in between the coats of shellac, we'll also use a really fine sandpaper. And then the final coat, really fine steel wool. And then also they'll give us a nice smooth finish to constantly be resting our wrists on. Oh boy, that is so damn smooth. That's crazy. But I'm gonna go even crazier. Where's that 1200 at? 1200!
Damn. Now we can use the mineral oil to just clean up all this dust from the sanding before we finish. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Gives an idea of what it'll look like finished. Let's bring that keyboard back out. It's gonna look really nice with these keys, actually. Oh my god, so smooth. Oh. How easy was that? Nice project. Spray the underside first. About 12 to 16 inches away when you spray this. Okay, we're going to wait for that first coat to dry, you know, after it gets tacky. Then we take some really fine sandpaper, just buff out any parts that are a little rough, get it to a nice smooth finish, and then go down to another coat. Okay, about ready for the second coat of shellac. I'm going to do a light sanding. Smooth out the first coat. Just a note on why I'm choosing to use shellac as the finish instead of like uh, linseed oil or a Danish oil finish. There was a few products like this listed on Amazon as well. Um, and they're all right, but again, I could make this myself, so I wasn't going to buy one. But some of the reviews that were on Amazon, I think people just don't understand the nature of wood sometimes when they're buying a wood product and that wood is an organic material. Uh, it's going to react to your touch. Um, I'm guessing the products on Amazon, they probably just finished it with some Danish oil or another oil rub. So I'm guessing, you know, that's just an oil finish. It doesn't really seal anything off. It just absorbs into the wood. And that oil finish with these natural oils in your hands, constantly touching the wood, is also going to absorb into the wood and cause different colorations and patinas. And I'm guessing that would be why that would happen. So I'm gonna, I figured I'd try shellac to try to avoid any discoloration um, because sh shellac does seal a little bit and it also creates a nice smooth finish. So I was hoping I'd get a nice smooth finish to be using and then also the oils in my hands wouldn't be discoloring the wood. We're gonna see if that method has any clout to it. But anyway, let's give this a little bit of a sand before we move on to the next coat. It's just so light, you don't want to take off the coat of finish, you're just getting rid of any of the roughness that might have come with the first coat. Feels really good. Again, just gonna wipe off some of that dust with the light. Bit of mineral spirits. Clean the dry rag. I already see how nice it's looking just with one coat. It feels really smooth as well. Alright, let's do our second coat. Okay. 
All right, I'll let that one dry. Probably about 20 minutes and we can do another coat. Okay, that coat's good. Let's give it another little sand. Is it 1200 grit again? Feels so good. This is gonna, this is working out. All right! Just gonna do one final third coat. Coats on. Let that dry. Alright, so I just let the final coat sit on there overnight. Oh boy, this is super smooth to the touch right now. This is gonna be really nice, I think. Nice and comfy. It's definitely got a nice protective seal on there now, so I don't think any oil from my hand will be discoloring this any. Just the shellac gives this nice smooth surface. But now, I'm just gonna take off some of this like super high shine that's on this with some extra fine steel wool. Just sort of buff out this a little bit. You'll notice as I'm doing this, you just sort of get a little bit of residue like when you're sanding, so we're going to clean it up with some mineral spirits after that. You just go in the direction of the grain. Just want to smooth this out. We don't want to take any finish off. We're just sort of evening everything out. I'm not worried about the underside. That can be rougher because I want the rubber feet to be able to adhere to it. Nice. All right. Now we're gonna put the feet on. Okay, so I got these little rubber adhesives, little rubber protective pads. They'll go on the bottom. I'm just trying to see which size will be best. I'm gonna use these rectangular ones and put one in every corner. I think that'll help it sit nice. So you remember when I was setting this up, I took these into consideration, the height of these, to get this up to the final height to match the keyboard. Here we have it, our finished keyboard rest. Beautiful. Let's go try that out on the desk setup. 